Hello, I'm Atuba Jordan. This is a new week and I'm going to be sharing some very important thoughts with you this week, you know, as, as inspired by the Spirit of God. You know, the, the, the world is going through a phase right now and there's so much confuse, confusion. Governments of different nations are just at, at a loss of what to do right now. They don't know everybody's searching for answers. Praise God. But you see, as God's children, we have a role to play, especially in this season. Now, number one, you must understand that Jesus said something. He says, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. See, there is a big difference, even though we all reside here. But you see, there is a big difference between God's children and those that are not God's children. You know, sometimes I, I you know, going through the internet, you, you, you see... Um, even certain prophets running ahead to say, I prophesied this thing or I, I said this thing. You know, sometimes I, I watch things like this and I wonder what, what goes through their mind. I, you know, sometimes I just wonder, have these people read the scriptures? I'm not one of those who want to even see or be told of such calamity that is going to come on the end. I don't want to hear it. See, I don't want God to tell me that. You know, someone said, but it's good to know. No, not, not necessarily. Because, you see, when God tells you a thing like that, the burden is on you. You know, you know something I wonder if they've read books like the, the, the Ezekiel chapter 3. You know, wait, let, me, let me read it. You know, sometimes people even pray. You see someone prophesying and, and you want... You want, Father, I want you to be revealing things to me. Be careful what, what is revealed to you. Because there is a burden that comes on you when such things are revealed to you. I'll tell you why I'm showing this. Look at Ezekiel chapter 3. Now verse 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, you need to understand what he's saying there. He says, hear my word, where? At my mouth. How I can explain that to you. Now, let me just explain what it means. Say, hear my word at my mouth. See, now there's a big difference between seeing a vision and hearing the Lord speak to you. And many times even, people, hear angels speaking to them and, and it says the Lord. People see visions and they say the Lord have spoken to me. It's not every vision you see that means the Lord is speaking to you. See, you need to understand these things. Many people, so they, they jungle all, juggle all these things and, and get into trouble at the end of the day. They are confused. You prophesy, it doesn't come to pass and then you're wondering. The fact that you saw something doesn't mean the Lord is speaking to you about it. See, and then when you, when you want to narrate, just narrate what you saw and leave the interpretation. If God has not spoken to you, don't claim by that vision God has spoken to you. Because you may not be able to defend it before him. See, you need to understand. The reason is this. The moment God opens his mouth to speak to you, if it's a word from his mouth, then you know that that word is most likely to come to pass. But it's different from a vision. But I want to show you something what God says here. So he says, You shall hear, therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now look at verse 18. It says, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. I want you to get that point. God says, if I say to the wicked that the wicked is going to die, and then I, he says, if I tell you that, and then you don't take that warning and go to warn the wicked, I want you to understand something here. The purpose of warning the wicked in your heart is to save his life. Now, when you take a warning to someone and your purpose is to save his life, there is a way you go about that warning. You won't say it casually. See, you, you're not going to say it casually. You will do everything possible to save that young man's life or, or woman or whoever it is. 
But I want you to notice, he even said to the wicked. So this person, God qualifies this person as a wicked person. And God is saying, you need to warn that wicked person for me. And your purpose of warning the person is to what? Save his life. That should be your intention. Not to say it so that people will hear that you said it. Then when the person dies, say, I said it too. <laughs> you don't understand something. Watch, 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 watch what he said. It says, to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at thy hand. You who received that vision that that wicked man is going to die, and you said it in your congregation, and you didn't go to that wicked man to do everything to save his life. If that man dies, and you come to your congregation and say, I told you that man is going to die. Chief prophet, get ready. God is going to require his life from your hands. How much will you pay for the life of the person that have died? Can, can, can you see why it's not, it's not a thing of celebration to say that God told me. I remember, you know, during the last election. Now, years before this time, I had a vision, a, a very clear vision. And I saw a certain man and I saw how he was assassinated. And then when he was assassinated, I was like, what's going on here? And I heard someone say, Oh, it's because he joined politics. And I, woke, I, have ne I heard the name of the man clearly in that vision. Before that, I have never heard that name anywhere before. I don't know who the person is, but I just heard the name. Three of his names. I heard three of his names. Several years ago. Now, I, at first I thought maybe it was just, just a vision. This person doesn't really exist. I, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, whoever this is, can you just save the person? Now, Several years down the line, if, a few years after that vision, actually, I, I, I saw the news that this person existed. I'm like, what? Now, it gave me some concern. But when I checked, this person had nothing to do with politics. So I said, okay, fine, it's cool. But then during the last election, the person emerged and was going to contest for an election, precisely the governorship election. And I remember that vision I had. I said, this is serious now. And I began to pray and asking God, I said, Lord, you can't show me this and it comes to pass. It's not going to work. And I began to pray and somehow I got in contact with the person. And I told the person, look, this race is not for you. Withdraw because this is what the Lord is saying. This is what the Lord told me years ago. And, and please. And then the person went ahead and said, no, there's no way. I'm not ready. I'm ready to even die. I said, what? Now, at that point, I felt I have warned him. So whatever happens to him, his life is in his own hands. But a few days after I spoke to, with him, I said to myself, I said, no, the purpose is to save his life. And I began to pray. I prayed for this man. Till today, I've not even seen him physically. But I prayed for this man until he was disqualified out of the race. And he never got to contest in that election. And I said, look, God just saved his life. Now, you see, it's not about the prophecy coming to pass. It's about the lives of people being saved. Now, there are some that even when you want them, they will still go ahead and do what they want to do. And, but make sure you have done everything you know to do to save their lives. That's your responsibility. Praise God. See, I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because I've got to stop now because of time. God bless you. Bye-bye.